we want to give you a content warning right off the top of this episode. We're going to be talking about childhood sexual abuse. You're going to hear directly from boys who came forward to police. We're not going to get into any kind of graphic detail, but if that's something you're not okay with hearing about right now, this is your heads up. As a kid, I was, I was you know, I was terrified. I was like, what the hell's going on? You know what I'm saying? I was like half asleep, half awake. Thanks for Ehab for doing such an incredible job. I mean, he actually take care of a lot of these kids down here, take them all over places. He said, are you ever going to talk about it? We're never going to talk about this again. Yeah, this man needs to be stopped. And what kills me the most is like, everybody described it the same way. Obviously, these stories now are being passed around. Everybody described it the same way. And I'm the one person who hasn't really talked about it. I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, welcome to our deep dive into issues that matter to you. So you were about 11 years old at that time? I think so. 12, 11, something like that. When I first got a hold of these Pinellas Park police recordings through a public records request, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to report on them. What was the news value to the public? But as I listened through hours and hours of these boys opening up to police, I started to realize there's a lot in there that we can learn about recognizing grooming behaviors and coming forward. And by sharing their stories, these boys can help prevent this from happening to other kids. When was telling me about, you know, his story, I was like, yeah, you know, he's, you know, he, you know, he's uh, done something to me too. We're not going to get into the details of their abuse, and we've disguised their voices to help protect their identities. If you haven't seen our May 2022 episode on Ehab Goname, or if you just want a refresher, let's get you caught up. What's going on? You're under arrest. Before Goname's August 2021 arrest, he spent years volunteering with the youth program at the Islamic Society of the Tampa Bay area. Also known as Istaba. We're giving some goodie bags for the kids, wanna, boys and girls. This is awesome. In early 2021, boys told police Gonim sexually abused them during sleepovers at his house in this Pinellas Park neighborhood and on overnight trips out of town for events like Islamic youth conventions. In May 2022, we told you we uncovered that years before Gonim's arrest, I want to let you know that you have the right to remain silent. Leadership at this mosque was told in 2017 and again in 2020 about accusations that Gonim had inappropriate contact with boys when he lived in New Jersey. Istaba Administrator Mohammed Akkad said he didn't trust the former employee who repeatedly raised the concerns. And since he wasn't able to prove the accusations were true, the mosque allowed Gonaim to keep volunteering with kids. If there were accusations back in 2017, even if you looked into that, couldn't find evidence, right. don't you think that there was some kind of responsibility to keep this man away from children just in case? There was, the accusation was made by somebody who this man was supposed to replace, so he had a motive. A There's no story. Okay, now for the new developments. Gonaim's trial, which was scheduled to start at this courthouse this month, never happened. After nearly a year and a half out in the community on bond, he was booked into this jail less than three weeks ago on February 8th, 2023, after he took a plea deal on all charges, three counts of unlawful sexual activity with a minor and one molestation charge. These charges were only related to the accusations during sleepovers at his home in Pinellas Park. He agreed to serve eight years in prison, followed by two years of probation. He'll also have to register as a sex offender. For the boys who survived his abuse, it's been a long wait. Two years have passed since they came forward to police. In these Pinellas Park police recordings, all five told detectives Gonaim touched them inappropriately when he thought they were sleeping. Everybody said the same thing. They said the same thing. Apparently they said this other kid said the same thing. It feels like a dream. Some of the boys said Gonaim gave them pills first. He was like telling us that 
this pill is like it's like for my doctors like four hundred dollars like a thousand dollars like really expensive and like it helps like sleep your immune system and stuff i was seeing stuff i was like couldn't stand straight i felt like i was like hallucinating or stuff mm -hmm. like i don't know how drugs like feel like i don't know like if you're high or whatever but like, i felt like the bed was like moving around and stuff like that. The boys told police they'd noticed strange touching from Gonaim before the abuse. They said he would sometimes pinch boys on the thigh while swimming or encourage them to sit on his lap. What is grooming? Grooming would be a situation in which a child very subtly and very uh, over a period of time would be introduced to things of a sexual nature. This is Dr. Howard Rogers. He's the medical director for USF Health's child protection team. Red flags in, in the area of grooming would start out with something potentially very subtle, requests for trips alone. And initially that may involve just a trip to get ice cream and, and it may not involve anything that's uh, unusual or wrong, uh, touching on the, the shoulder or the, the arm or something like that. It's a way that a perpetrator, alleged perpetrator, might be able to uh, break down a wall that would be otherwise up for the child. We asked child abuse pediatrician Dr. Randy Alexander to listen to the police recordings. Tell me a little bit more about how predators can sometimes use a community, like a religious community, to gain access to children? Well, they're going to be attracted to where the kids are. And that's school systems, it's youth serving organizations, and of course religious organizations too. If they can get to where the kids are and establish a position of trust, then it's just access to your prey. Essentially. Dr. Alexander also says secrecy is a red flag, and it'll probably start with something small before it escalates. It could be little trivial things like, well, don't tell anybody that I bought you a milkshake or um, that I gave you uh, $5 or something trivial like that. And so you're trying to establish, if you're the perpetrator, the, the concept that you know, we're gonna have secrets just between us. So what do you do if this is happening to you? Or if these red flags sound exactly like someone you know? These boys started confiding in each other and tried to figure out their next move. I told him some stuff that, that about the pill and stuff. He was like, was like, oh my God, there's no way. He told me that this happened to like other people. Like it was like literally like almost the exact same thing. I just didn't know how to, you know, come out with it. So, you know, we just, said it among us and you know we always used to think like what you know like what could we do ultimately they came forward to a trusted adult who called the police and dr alexander says that's exactly how it should go find someone you don't have to be afraid to tell you know yes it will create a stir but having it persist will be a stir too and the problem is 10 years from now which will you wish you had, you'd done? After Gonim was booked into jail, I talked to one of the boys who came forward to police. He tells me the detective pointed out grooming behaviors to him when he was sharing his story. I know how it works. We're not dumb. Well, we don't talk to strangers, stranger danger, the, the buddy the system, whatever. Don't, someone tells you I have candy, don't go. Like, common sense. But it's just the fact that he put himself into the community. That's probably the grooming process. Like, that's, I didn't, like, I never would have thought, like, oh, you know, I always thought it would be a stranger, not someone that is supposed to just, you know, someone who's kind of there. And this really stood out to me. He compared that conversation with the detective to being sick for a really long time and finally talking to a doctor who knows exactly what's wrong with you. He also tells me Islam teaches him to be merciful and forgive, but he still wants to hear an explanation directly from Gonaim of why he did this. Thanks for watching What's Brewing. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and I'll see you next time.